Coming up, we'll see what life is like in and out of the water for the men's and women's swimming and diving teams. We'll visit with second-year women's hoops coach Marissa Mosley and profile the women's cross-country team, the 2019 Patriot League champions. It's all next on this episode of BU Terriers Unleashed. If you're a competitor, you want to win. I think I'm a passionate coach. We are relentless in everything we do. I'm intense. We're going to cut hard, and we're going to set screens, and we're going to make shots, and then we're going to run it again. Love my players. We got this thing going on. I want to be able to have an impact on my players' lives. As much as I want to win and I want to compete, I also want to make sure that they're better women when they leave here than when they got here. A native of Springfield, Massachusetts, Marissa had a standout career with the Terriers from 2000 to 2004. She also got a great education and loved every minute of her time on Commonwealth Avenue. My time here was incredible. Sometimes it's weird to walk back in the court and know that I was here for four years playing and now obviously as a coach, but as a student athlete, I was really pushed academically and athletically here, which that's what I wanted when I chose BU. And being able to be a part of the first team to ever go to the NCAA tournament for me was something that I'll never forget. And at the same time, it drives me to try to get my team back here now as a coach. And for the first time in the history of the women's basketball program at Boston University, the Terriers are going to the NCAA tournament. It is my pleasure to introduce a two-time captain, member of our only women's basketball team for now that's appeared in the NCAA tournament, the eighth coach in program history, a terrier, Marissa Mosley. I feel really fortunate that Drew gave me the opportunity to come back and that the university would take a chance on someone who hadn't been a head coach before. It's really special when you could come back to a place that you played at and know that there's other things that this program can become. I think Coach Mo has brought a lot of her own experiences, especially herself being a BU women's basketball player, former player, and having those experiences and then all the experiences that she's had at UConn and having that success. After her playing days concluded, Marissa pursued a coaching career, eventually landing at UConn as an assistant to the legendary Gino Oriema and helping the Huskies win an incredible five national titles during her time there. The national championship goes to Connecticut for the fourth year in a row. Really fortunate to be under Coach Oriema's tutelage for nine years. I probably learned a ton from Coach Ariyama when it comes to X's and O's, and I can see the game um, really well. We want to make sure that we attack and transition. Run, run, run. Get to our spots, fill two, fill three. Make sure that our big guys are running on the court. The way that you carry yourselves and your mindset and the way that you practice. To me, those were little lessons along the way that really um, go into creating a culture of winning. The way that this BU team is structured is that we have a relentless pursuit for perfection. The change in culture is something that we kind of wanted to emphasize from as soon as Coach Mo came in. We really set high goals for the season starting in the summer and setting the tone for what we wanted the season to be like. The culture change is something that Coach Mo really implemented into the team. Perfection means that we have everything that we have to do, we do to win. We dive on loose balls, we go get offensive rebounds, we set a great screen for our teammates and we're excited for their success. You can teach anybody basketball, but you can't teach how to be a great person, you can't teach unselfish play, you can't teach um, getting excited for other people's successes. That Boston across there, that means something to me, and it should mean something to you as well. Let's go. Together on three, one, two, three, together. In her first season as head coach, Marissa led the Terriers to their best Patriot League finish ever and took home Coach of the Year honors. 
if you would have told me back in the fall last year that I would have been named Coach of the Year, I would have told you you're crazy. I inherited a group of wonderful women who just really wanted to be coached and taught and bought into everything that we were trying to implement here. They competed hard every single day. I credit all to them. They make us look good. Coming up, we're hitting the water and then diving into the business world with two of the BU swimming and diving team's best when BU Terriers Unleashed continues. My best event is the 200 freestyle. Even though it's a sprint, it's not that short. I'm a sprinter. It's a lot of fun. Everyone there is super fun, super hype, and just getting everyone riled up to go swim fast. Boston University has both men's and women's swimming and diving teams who compete at the Division I level. It's a tough sport that requires a unique level of commitment and passion. My dad went to UPenn and swam there. One year he suggested I try out swimming and threw me in with the junior team and fell in love with it. By senior year, D1 was the main goal and then go find a college that has a good engineering program. And eventually I just landed on Boston University because of the community in Boston's an amazing city. I was always really into sports, like from a young age, but my sister got into swimming actually and I kind of just followed along. I think I just really enjoyed it and the feeling of being in the water was kind of fun. I really have always liked the city of Boston, so it kind of just worked out. Started actually with biomedical engineering. Then I realized that mechanical Engineering is more broad. I wanted to do something that was with my passion, so I had to find that passion. That passion lies within sports, definitely. One of the benefits of playing sports at a place like BU is the opportunity the school provides its student athletes. For Megan and Alex, that came in the form of a unique internship with a cool company called Hydro. I was basically trying to find something to do with sports, and I got to work with all of these people that had a sports background on this live outdoor reality machine and basically just helped improve the user experience. Stay with me. Eight. Hydro is the live outdoor reality rower in that it really capitalizes on this concept of live outdoor reality, meaning everything that we do is live and it's really transporting you in your home to the water. So we film live twice a day, every day. Six months out of the year we're up here in Boston on the Charles and then six months out of the year we're down in Miami. We have a team of 12 professional rowers and they're everywhere from uh, former Olympians to people who are actively competing and gunning for the next Olympic cycle. The idea that you could work out with this world-class athlete, it's a really special experience. Whoa. Woo! Stingray apparently. I was working with the research and development team here as a mechanical engineering intern. And our whole plan was to take the hydro and make it a more connected user experience. I was working mechanically to create uh, different display configurations to make the user feel more like they were on the water. That's the one, come on. As a startup, you know, we're always looking for that, that young talent, and so to be in an area like Boston that has such an incredible pool of candidates, including BU, um, where there's such talent, it's truly a unique setting in that sense, and that the work that they're doing truly matters. It's going to impact what we do uh, down the road and how we shape this company, so it's a, it's a really exciting time, and we're, we're grateful for their work. I think the coolest thing I took away from it was just the amount of responsibility that the team I worked with gave me. They really trusted me with the process, and it, I think I feel like it really helped me grow, gave me a lot more confidence going into future job opportunities. It's pretty clear that all of Megan and Alex's hard work in the water at BU directly contributed to their success away from the pool and means the future is very bright. It's obviously not easy, but with like your support of your team, etc., people doing exactly what you're doing, it makes it all that easier. We have double practices and then you have school all day. And then even with my internship, I still had practice, PT. It goes from having these really, really long days versus just an eight hour work day, which 
I am more than fine with and I'm excited for. So tying in those two passions of engineering and sports would just really be fun to go to work every day. Up next, we'll try and keep pace with the women's cross country team and see what it takes to be the Patriot League's best. Stay with us. Summer months tend to be quiet times at most academic institutions. At Boston University, it was the perfect time to get some important work done. The summer was exciting as we kicked off a couple of renovations. Within our case center adjacent to Walter Brown, we renovated the Dribben Lobby, which serves really as the gateway to our athletic fields and our athletics complex. I know that th this modernizes that. Sit. Good, all right, good job. The Elliott Driven Lobby in the Case Center was completely redone. New displays were added, featuring current student athletes, terriers in the Olympics, a touchscreen exhibit of the school's Athletic Hall of Fame, as well as renovations to the stairwell leading to the athletic offices at 300 Babcock Street. <laughs> The renovations also improved accessibility and proudly brands BU Athletics while using words from Who We Are, a collection of tenets that define the priorities and values of the department. It's symbolic of the work that we're planning on doing with most of our facilities over the next couple of years. We've got a master plan that, that really touches every facility and, and certainly with the support of the university and support of you know, the philanthropic support, I think we will get a lot of this done. The BU women's cross country team is coming off another successful season. One of the key contributors was freshman Sophia Jacobs Townsley, the Patriot League's Rookie of the Year. My junior year, Coach Spangler reached out to me and um, I came on an unofficial visit here and loved it, came on an official and loved it. So BU was kind of my primary choice. I've been loving it. She came in immediately and was a contributor continued to get better and was really impressed by the way she adapted to training and adapted to college racing and, and had a great year. She's got the focus, the dedication, she's got the talent, she's got everything she needs to, to be uh, one of the best. Along with talented underclassmen, the Terriers had incredible veteran leadership in senior captain and the Patriot League's outstanding runner for 2019, Abigail Google. I was undecided academically and BU um, has a lot to offer. I also wanted to experience what it's like to live in a city. It's been exciting. She's been a great team leader. You know, she's one of our team captains this year. You know, it was great for her to win the individual champion award at Patriot League, but I know that the team award was was extra sweet. That day, I think I'll remember it forever and think about it a lot. Um, everything just came together for us at the right time. Here we go, Emily. Take the dry line. It was just so exciting to win individually and then have the team win. And then my teammate won the Rookie of the Meet Award and coach won Coach of the Year. So that just felt really nice um, to sweep the awards and to show that, you know, we're a program that, you know, is pretty competitive and belongs on top of the league. So good, Abby. Woo! So good. That was super important for our team and just super amazing. And I was just so happy to be a part of it. I don't think in running I've ever felt part of something greater than myself than I have um, on the BU Women's Cross Country team. And for that to be kind of what my first semester <laughs> has been like. Like it's just been working with a group of really hard working teammates. The team's 2019 championship was the result of a lot of great performances and hard work by all involved. But the seeds for that success were planted long ago by head coach Paul Spangler and his staff. A lot of it's recruiting, you know, recruiting athletes that fit what we're looking for, both academically and athletically. Our goal, obviously, coming into this year was to win conference. 
which we did. And now uh, you know, going into next year, our goal is to win again. And so we have to just recognize that we got to put in the work to achieve that goal. Uh, but then also getting the team to nationals on the women's side. And it's going to take first um, the athletes knowing that they belong there, but then also recognizing the work that they need to do to get there. And I think we're heading in that direction. My time here at BU has just been incredible. You know, a lot of athletes work really hard at their sports and, you know, they don't, you know, end up with championships their senior year. And so I feel really fortunate that things really came together at the right time. I've met so many incredible people who have motivated me and inspired me in so many ways. I've been able to be a student, an athlete, a researcher. Yeah, I've been able to kind of pursue every passion here. Dogs on three! One, two, three! Lots more still to come here on BU Terriers Unleashed as we profile men's basketball star Walter White and his inspiring journey to Boston University. Stay tuned. could literally guard all five guys on the floor. He's a great athlete, he moves his feet, he's got great anticipation, he's very long. He can go block a shot, tip a ball, get to a guy that most guys can't. He's been a guy that can, that can make shots, he's been a guy that can get to the rim. So he's a guy that can hurt you in a lot of different ways. I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut. Inner city, rough neighborhood, like it was kind of just, basketball was like an outlet. My mother just kept me busy all the time. And then like once I got to high school, that's when I started to get serious with basketball. So it's been a journey. Like a lot of young hoops players, Walter's future success in the game and in life started with a coach that cared. I played AAU for my coach, Drew Gladstone, and he got a job at St. St. Luke's, and he was like, you're a good student, like, I think, I think you'll be a great fit for our, our program, so I ended up going there, and I felt like that was the best decision I made. He just took me in open arms and just taught me the game and, and really just helped me become the, the player I am today, so a lot of credit to him, for sure. While at St. Luke's, Walter connected with Terriers head coach Joe Jones, who convinced the budding star to come to BU not just for the basketball, but for the great education he would receive. He was very serious about, about being a great player, very serious about being a, a great student as well. It was just a great match for what we were looking for too. He was a highly touted kid. I think he chose a place that he thought he would be a great fit, and I think the academic component played a huge part in that. School was always first. Well, I didn't have my father in my life, and I kind of needed somebody that I needed a male figure to just kind of teach me, teach me how to be a man. And he's been recruiting me since I was my sophomore year, so I built a really good relationship with him. I just felt like I trusted him, and then that was the biggest thing. Like I, somebody like that, I needed somebody to be there for me, just more than just basketball side. And Coach Jones was definitely the person for me. <laughs> he's he was a guy that we we. Um... We marked right away, and then when you get to know him, what a fantastic kid. He was raised by a single mom, and his mom is absolutely wonderful. He wants to be a great player. He's not afraid of the big moment. He's a true terrier. He's what we all are about here at BU. I feel like I'm an all-around player. I could do a little bit of everything. That's kind of what I harp my game on, just to try to just work on all aspects of my game so I can be an all-around threat. I have the utmost faith in this team that we can win a championship. We have the, a great group of guys, the right pieces. We're, we're a hard-playing a hard playing team. We, we go hard on the defensive end and the offensive end, and we just try to make an impact every time we step on the floor. While Walter is obviously focused on helping the Terriers win on the court right now, he has much larger goals in mind for the future. 
My major is sociology and I have a minor in business. I'm set to graduate next December. I have an extra year to work on my master's, so I want to find a field that I'm doing something that's impacting people's lives on a, a larger scale. That's kind of what I learned from my mother. She's a social worker. And also a lot of ways that I can really just impact the community, especially in a, an urban area like New Haven, Connecticut, where there's a lot of a lot of issues that can be fixed and a lot of things that I can do to help the community and I would, I would love to do that. Boston Public Schools reading to children. It's great to get off campus and get back to the community and spread a ton of holiday cheer. I think that's a moose. <laughs> Once again this December, BU student athletes representing all 24 varsity teams visited the Boston Public Schools and read to 360 children. The holiday reading program is real important to our department. It's, a, it's an initiative that we've had since 1997. Uh, it's real important to get our students involved in the community with the Boston Public Schools. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to see the interaction with, uh, with our students and, and, and their students and it's great that our student athletes take on uh, community involvement as a real response. Happy holidays, go BU! That'll do it for this episode. We'll be covering Boston University athletics all year long. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to tune in next time for another exciting episode of BU Terriers Unleashed.